What's up, guys? Welcome back to Gamer Gab. I'm Wayne. And I'm Ashton. And today on Gamer Gab, we're going to get started with a little segment we like to call Games to Play Between Games. <laughs> That's right. And after that, we're going to get into our review of the Resident Evil 4 remake, followed by some game news. All right, let's get to it. Go. Okay, so we all have games that we're we're waiting on to release, mm -hmm. you know, and you're looking to scratch that itch that you can't quite do yet. Um, so, tell me what games have helped you get through to the next game release that you're waiting on. What do you have first on your list? Okay, so first up, I've got a game called Blacktail. Um, this is one of those that I, you know, like I said, I didn't have anything to play at the time, and so I'm just scrolling through the game store and um, saw it, read the synopsis, and I thought that sounds really interesting. Um, and so I was like, I'll give it a shot. Um, Blacktail is a game about uh, Baba Yaga. If you're not familiar with Slavic or Eastern European folk tales or mythology, um, according to Wikipedia, Baba Yaga is uh, an ogress who steals, cooks, and eats her victims, usually children, and lives in a hut that is on bird's legs. So basically, mix of of genres i guess you could say because it's got some really light colorful whimsical sort of environments but then there's this juxtaposition of these really dark sort of scary um imagery that that's thrown in there too mm -hmm. there's uh mor morality choices as well that's my good deed for the day. It's a really, a really unique game. And I found out that this is um, the studio's first ever video game. Wow. That they've, that they've produced. So yeah, I was really impressed with it. Do you know when this game released? Um, let me check real quick. Put in some elevator music. I'm gonna vibe to the elevator music. Um, yeah, Blacktail actually released in 2022. Says Fairly it new. is a first person shooter developed by a Polish studio called The Parasite and published by Focus Entertainment. So, okay. yeah, I mean, it was their first game and it's very cool. Uh, is this game uh, linear? It sounds like it's an RPG with choices. It is, and it's actually open world, too. The okay. world is actually really big. I, I was expecting this to be just sort of like a quick little mm -hmm. little romp around, you know, just something to kill time. Yeah. But it wasn't. It's an open world. There, There's a lot of stuff to do, a lot of side quests and stuff. Okay. Um, there are some really unique gameplay mechanics in there. If you're bored, definitely check out Blacktail. All right, so what's your first game for games to play between games? My first game is one of my all-time favorites, and you've heard a lot about it from me. Mm -hmm. yep. It's uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Sure. And uh, basically, this game summed up, you're a young guy who lives in a village and is the son of a blacksmith. Right. And you, you come in just in time uh, for your character to be tragedy stricken. Yeah, yeah. Um, his village gets invaded and destroyed. All the classics. Mm -hmm. He stuff. was craving excitement. Yeah. And then that's what happened. That's true. You know? So after that, it sends him out on a journey and he he learns about himself and learns a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but basically, this is a great open world RPG. I would say this is kind of like, this game is like the Dark Souls of open world RPGs. Like, the combat is punishing. I mean, it because when you start this game, because like you said, you're the son of a you're blacksmith, a boy. Yeah, like, you don't know how to do anything. You don't know how to fight. Yes. You don't even know how to read. Yeah, but see, that's what I loved about the game. After I had faith that the mechanics would grow as your character did, which is true. It yeah. does. So your frustration 
you'll 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 level up and be able to handle yourself and then you're going to be so proud of yourself because it was a challenge um but it's really cool how accurate it is you know if you wanted to learn how to fix anything you can learn to fix your own weapons you don't have to pay someone if you want to learn how to read and make money on the side you can do that and it helps you with your own quests if you want if you can figure out a different way to do a quest it's not going to punish you for that you can't even go into the water until you find someone to teach you to swim yeah and see so for some people it might bother them for me it was like wow like so much insight and it can, yes, it can frustrate you at times, but I promise you, if you give it a chance, the story is so good. The character growth is there, the storyline. I mean, all of it is just really good. And it's rewarding. You get in what you put in. Or I get, how does that saying go? You get out what you put in. Yeah, what he said. Um, so it, it just surprised me altogether with how great it was because it was an underrated developer. It was an underrated game. It didn't have much publicity for it found it one day whenever I was trying to scratch that itch, mm -hmm. you know, for an open world RPG. Yeah, it, it definitely fills that that void. And it's also a game that is going to take you a long time to get through. So yes. um, now I will say one thing. Possibly one of the most disappointing endings I think I've ever seen in a game. Like it, it, it hurt me. So it's definitely worth playing, but it be, left me wanting more. How be about ready that? for that. It left me wanting more. And now I actually follow this guy and the only thing he talks about is Kingdom Come Deliverance. There might be a sequel coming. I mean, so. if they don't, then it, it will live on in my brain as one of the most disappointing endings, like right up there with Halo 2, if you know what I'm talking about, if you know I'm talking about. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. You still have PTSD from that. Oh my gosh. On to the next game. Yeah, so my next game um, that I'm going to talk about for Games Between Games is called um, Phobia. It's also, it's got a subtitle. It's like Phobia colon Saint Hotel. I, I don't know exactly how to how to pronounce that. No, um, really? Yeah. I thought you did good. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, but this is basically a uh, a low budget Resident Evil cr clone. Okay. Um, but what I liked about it was that they don't try to make it look like they're not. I mean, they they're open about the fact that they're basically ripping up reskinning Resident yeah. Evil, right? I mean, it takes place in a hotel, so like the mansion sort of you know mm -hmm. big place lots of rooms most of them are locked you spend all your time wandering around looking for keys and and whatnot and they even throw a couple of nods in there like direct nods to resident evil where um there uh there's a green herb <laughs> that that you can find and mm -hmm. yeah so i mean they, they do you eat that one Actually, there's a, a note on it that says, do not eat the green herb, it's toxic. So, yeah, just a little bit of a joke, kind of an Easter egg that they threw in there. Gotta love um, it. I play, I'm not going to lie, I played it with a walkthrough. More than half the doors are locked on each floor, and so you find a key on four floor, 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 floor. <laughs> floor, floor, floor. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find a key on, like, the fourth floor that unlocks a door on the second floor, and it'll take you ten minutes to get yeah. from one to the other, and so I just, like... That sounds like Resident Evil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... But the story was interesting. I mean, they had an original story and the graphics were decent for, for what it is. And it was just a fun game to play. And it, awesome. killed, it killed time. It did what it was supposed to do. Okay. All right, what do you got next? Okay, my next game is Vampire. With the Y. Thank you for that, Wayne. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's totally perfect for this segment because I would have absolutely looked over it. I mean, it didn't, it kind of got buried, you know? Yeah, I had sure. heard the name and then nothing else. So I was on a PlayStation Store, scrolled past it, it was on sales, like, mm, why not, you know? Got it, very good game. You play as a doctor who just came back from World War One, mm -hmm. and um, he's a blood specialist, so a hematologist, and he, as soon as he gets back, he gets turned into a vampire and begins his whole journey of figuring out why, why did this happen? Who did this to me? Because they purposefully mm -hmm. 
did it. Um, now, while this is going on, you're balancing your morals and you have the choice. The gamer has the choice. <laughs> you can be bad if you want to and get super powerful or you can be really good and you can heal people. Uh, you go back to your, your base and you can make medicine and heal people and help with the pandemic that's going on. Um, or you can mass murder people and get really powerful really quick but there there are repercussions for every choice that you make which i love that that you can actually see definitely yeah the repercussions from the choices that you make so it was just very neat it was a very good story be careful who you help be careful who you help yes tip. yes it was a very good story though and um that's what really actually got me through the whole the whole thing you want to figure out who did who did it why they did it and then you also are pulled in because your your choices are affecting the people that you end up caring about yeah for sure you know so it's sort of open world right like i mean there are like mm -hmm. areas that you have you have to load into but each area yeah. is open you can go wherever you want i'm in that area i'm an open world junkie absolutely yeah. so it's a little bit when i hear that a game isn't then i'm a little bit turned turned off by that but it's open enough I was not bored with it. There's so many things to do and invest your time in that it, it's just a, it's a solid game and it's very unique. So definitely if you are bored and trying to wait for the next game to release, grab this game. Absolutely. So what what do you have next? My next game is one that I just recently encountered. Uh, I played it probably a month ago. It's called The Gunk. Um, this is a game for people who enjoy the satisfaction of cleaning things, but are also lazy. So, right, best of both worlds, right? Yeah. You can sit on the couch and clean stuff. And so, you're, as your character, you land in your spaceship on this um, undiscovered planet, basically. And it's really beautiful and colorful and vibrant, but there's this weird gunk everywhere. Basically the equivalent of pollution, sort of, right? And this planet is uninhabited. And so you have this, um, this glove on your hand. You find out that your character was in an accident and lost her hand. And she's sort of like a mechanical engineer, and so she built herself this gauntlet. It looks almost like the Infinity Gauntlet a little bit, but like okay. if it was made with junk. And so, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> very cool, kind of steampunk looking, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but you can use it to pull things towards you, kind of like telekinesis almost, except for it's it's sort of like vacuum based, right? There's some really great platforming. Um, it's third person sort of not over the shoulder but like third person more removed you know um those are the best kind of games i think for platforming because sometimes in first person or even like close up third person it's kind of hard to tell where your character's gonna land mm -hmm. and so you feel like you're just jumping into oblivion and hope for the best right but yeah. this game does platforming really well there are some really fun mechanics and every time you completely remove the gunk from an area there's this transition where the whole area sort of comes back to life and you see you so you're restoring the environment as you're going along right so you feel productive exactly the overarching plot i guess you could say is that you're um, trying to figure out what happened to the civilization that mm -hmm. once occupied this planet right and yeah. where did the gunk come from and where did they go and so that's and but it's really fun and it's really unique my last game is Forgotten City. And originally this game started out as a mod for Skyrim. Yeah. Yeah, well it grew so big and got so many fans that it became its own game. So talk about an accomplishment. Really, and I think that there were only a handful of guys that actually worked on this thing. So yes. it makes it even more impressive. So congratulations to you guys because y'all did great. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yes, this game will keep you going because you want answers. And it's bizarre. I will not get into it too far because it is, my jaw dropped. My jaw dropped towards the end. I was uh, like, yeah. Um, but essentially, you plop into this city and you know nothing. You don't know what's going on. You don't know how you got there. You're looking for answers and um, come to find out it's a, a loop based game. And every time you come back, you're finding out more and more and more. And it'll keep you going just because 
of all the questions. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like one big puzzle in a way. It is. I recently um, decided not to download and try a game that was because the mechanic was it was based on a loop, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, I, don't, I don't know about that. But yeah. with this game, once you get a few steps in, maybe your you know fourth or fifth time through it, there are ways that you can sort of shorten up those steps that you know you have to go through. Yeah. The, there are event, there's a, a set way that the events have to unfold in order for you not to reset. And I like that they worked in a way where it's kind of a shortcut. You know, you can, you, you get a, you make a friend, everybody needs a friend. You make a friend and you can be like, go do this stuff for me while I go over here and yes, try like, not to die. It cuts that time because, you know, loop games, the pacing can can get mm -hmm. dull yeah. but yeah no that that wasn't the case in this one i'm very add and need to like keep things moving and uh i had no problem so i think that it's a very under um under appreciated uh, yeah it's like it's a underappreciated game just like a couple of the other games on our list mm -hmm. um but definitely will um keep you entertained until your next game release. I think that about sums it up for games to play between games, but before we go on to Resident Evil, we need to tell you about Conway Corp Internet. Whether it's streaming, playing competitively online, downloading content, or using remote play, Conway Corp's got you. We offer speeds of up to two gigs to keep you connected and in the game. Okay guys, so recently we both finished RE4. Wait, hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Did you, did you get a haircut? Yeah, yeah, I just, it was time. Did you paint your nails? You were gone for a, a bit. <laughs> okay, well now that we're both looking our best. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get back into Resident Evil 4. RE4. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Wayne here is a bit of a fanatic. You've been playing since the beginning, right? Mm, I mean. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, a bit more than I do on it. Um, mm. I haven't played a lot of the original so much. Um, I'm not sure about how everything lines up off the top of my head. Yeah. So go ahead and give us, for some of the people who don't know, you know, how they stack up, line up, the story, the background, and what this one is focused on, what this one's about. Okay, so in Resident Evil 4, we catch up with Leon S. Kennedy uh, from Resident Evil 2. This is set in 2004, so it's six years chronologically after the events in Raccoon City that we see Leon in in Resident Evil 2. So... Since we've been gone, our man has moved up in the world a little bit from, you know, in Resident Evil 2, he was a, a rookie on mm -hmm. the Raccoon City Police Department. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now he's working for the president. And so he has been asked personally by the president to go to this place, this village and rescue his daughter. And so that's where Resident Evil 4 picks up. And it's the same in the original and in the remake. Okay, so this one, correct me if I'm wrong, is almost like a, a side story in a way. Would you say that it, you know, I've heard that you don't see like the president's daughter again, later she doesn't pop back up. Yeah, yeah, it is it is sort of, I guess you could say, because like kind of a one-off because, you know, Resident Evil 2 and 3 sort of take place simultaneously just at different different places within Raccoon City. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, Resident Evil 4, you're off a different fighting place. a cult. Yeah, a Spanish cult. And yeah. then you do see Leon again in Resident Evil 6. Mm. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit of a, a sidetrack. People also have said, and I kind of noticed it too, it, I struggle with thinking of it as a horror game this one mm -hmm. you feel like you've got all the weapons and everything you need um you're playing as leon this big action guy and um 
I don't know, it kind of is like just a more of an action, like a shooter game than would you say like the other the other games? Um, you know, honestly, I don't think that Resident Evil and that's one of the criticisms of the franchise lately for sure is that they're not really classified as survival horror anymore. I mean, they are very much more action focused. The only real horror in Resident Evil games now is like jump scares and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, they don't try to hide anything or, or like play with your mind like psychologically. It's pretty much just all out there. You know, if you've seen yeah. one zombie Doberman, you've seen them all. Yeah, it doesn't. See, I can play. I can judge this because I can play this game alone. <laughs> But I cannot play. <laughs> That's the test. That's the test because there's. You just told me, oh, you need to pick up what game was it? Some horror game, and uh, I was like, huh? that's a no for me unless I can find somebody to play it with. Okay, so that's where we are in the world of Resident Evil at the beginning of RE4. So, as someone who hasn't played the original, mm-hmm. what did you think of it? For a lack of better terms, I thought that it was simply fun um it was just like a shooter for me you know i got on and it was instant gratification sure it didn't have well it does have some of those those puzzles you know right but besides that it was just simple like shooter um very satisfying and i liked the the pacing of it Mm -hmm. um there was more than just the story there was side quests that you could do. I thought that was cool that they added that in there. Yeah. Or or it might have actually been. Was it in the original? I mean, the the little things like shooting the... Medallions? The, yeah, the blue medallions and stuff were, were in there. But, and I mean, it's been forever since I played the original, but I don't remember specifically. Like rats? Like yeah, having no, rats there wasn't snakes. anything like that. No, it's the snakes were there um, in the original, but it was more like just something to annoy you. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that they added these things, and then it gives you um, something else to, to fill your time with or something to motivate you through the game sure. to upgrade your weapons and, and everything. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. The customization, you know, you had different weapon caches. Mm-hmm. It's a cache? Ca- uh, attache cache. case. Attache case. Okay. That had different abilities mm-hmm. or I guess bonuses that were, they were very small, but I yeah. used the one that was, it was black and it was, it wasn't as big as you could get, but it gave you a few more resources along the way, mm-hmm. which you can't get enough of that. Right. For sure. Um, and then I also enjoyed that they, they incorporated uh, like a carnival style shooter yeah that yes. that was definitely a, a neat addition yeah didn't see that one coming but i thought that that was a fun addition uh they just had fun with it yeah you know it didn't take it too seriously which it is you know resident evil right um yeah one of those things that i actually thought was was really funny was the little chicken village next yes. to the lake you know yes because um, you know, the boat section of the game was just sort of like it was on rails. Like you couldn't, you couldn't freely travel the lake. Oh, like okay. you had the boss fight with the giant yeah. salamander or whatever monster. That made me feel like I was playing PlayStation Two again. Yeah, exactly. The way the, the way the fight was. Yeah, and then once it was over, you you're on the next bank. Like yeah. automatically, you couldn't just go in the boat wherever okay. you wanted. And so when I got the option, I was like, okay, uh, let's see yeah. what else is out there, you know, because I was looking at the map and it looked like there were a couple of things out there. Yeah, it encourages you yeah. to not just rush through it, which we have the speed runners, you know, sure. um, but it encouraged you to kind of take your time in the story and yeah. go and see, because that, that's exactly what I did. I went and took my time to go and see, and especially my second playthrough, mm-hmm. any treasure that I did leave, because come on, the backtracking in this game yeah. is, uh so whenever i had a second chance i was like all right let's make sure that we we've gone through and covered everywhere because there's a lot of places you can go yeah for sure not to get off topic here but you've played biohazard and village right seven and eight yes actually i watched gameplay of village and i all the way through And then I have played Biohazard. Okay. What did you think about the difference with those two being first person? The first time that Resident Evil had tried out first person perspective versus the 
the first over the shoulder yeah. Resident Evil with Resident Evil 4. First person, honestly, is just more intense, I yeah. think. You know, I've got a friend who he has no issues playing whatever it is as long as it's third person. When we turned on Biohazard and he's just like, like, oh, I see you. He's like, I don't like first person. I can't handle it first person. Yeah. Um, and and I, I do get it. You know, the stuff is right here when it's happening. For sure. But um, as someone with bad vision, kind of helps me to be in first person. But it is a different feel and it is more creepy, which is yeah. also why I think RE4 and the other ones maybe aren't as intense. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I, can, or I can go along with that. Scary, you, you know. Um, but personally, I'm I'm good either way. I adjust to whatever it is. I mean, yeah. do you have an opinion? Um, I kind of like the first person, honestly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I agree with you. It does it does make it a little more intense, and it sort of brings it brings it back to horror a little bit. You yeah, know? yeah. Because it makes you experience those things firsthand. I mean, you know, in in Village where um, Ethan gets his arm cut off you know and he just like huh. sticks it back on there <laughs> seeing that in first person is way more impactful Impact, yeah. than seeing it in third person I always think with these games even if I make it out alive I'm not gonna be okay <laughs> yeah yeah. your first trip is to the therapist's office yeah I need a straight jacket uh -huh, for, for sure, sure. So, it sounds like you enjoyed it for the most part. So, did you have any cons to mention? Yes. I mean, one of them's obvious. I think we can all agree on is the backtracking. I mean, they're notorious for doing it. Um, so, this was no different. Right. And then the other big problem that I had was the button prompts. I would be hitting the button, you know, to take them out before their heads pop and mm -hmm. then they waste all my ammo right right yeah um and it wouldn't let me do it it i'm i'm looking at it there's the button prompt i'm hitting the button and it's not registering yeah he's oh. just swinging the knife in the he's air he's just swinging the knife or he's just stabbing them yeah and it's it's not doing what i needed to do right and, yeah you know and then you've got your your knife durability so i'm like okay well there goes all my knife durability mm -hmm. you know wasted yeah um so that bothered me and then the other thing i would say is um with the supplies to make ammo mm -hmm. oh my gosh in the first part of it i was good i was confident yeah you know and then you get one third of the way in where are my resources? Where's my gunpowder? <laughs> I have none. Yeah. You know, and then your knife, oh my gosh, it's it's about to break. Yeah, the knife durability in this game was a big con for me just because I, because it was an essential part of yeah. some of the, the boss encounters, you know, being able to parry their attacks and stuff. And if if your knife breaks mm -hmm. then you have no choice but to let them kill you yeah. and start back over at the beginning of the fight yeah i it could have been uh, maybe okay but my goodness stuff that damaged it so much mm -hmm. it was shocking yeah you know i mean i maxed it out my, my second playthrough i i've got it maxed out but uh and you can tell the difference then but i could only tell a major difference after i got it maxed out right personally so those were really my only big cons with the game. I mean, some of the puzzles I thought were a bit tedious. Like I kind of got over mm -hmm. over it before it was over. Yeah. <laughs> um, but besides that, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, what what's your take as someone who did play the original? Yeah, you know, I thought that I feel like they had a real chance to completely overhaul all the issues that the original one had and turn it all around and the game was fun mm -hmm. the remake was fun the original was fun but i feel like they missed some chances here to change some things that needed to be changed i mean the the backtracking was better in the remake it wasn't 
quite as bad as okay. in the original. So they they did some work there. Um, I still feel like there's a better way to do it than than having to go all the way back through the areas you've already been in. Yeah, like there was a uh, that trolley that was in on the rails mm-hmm. in one area, and I think you just used it to get from one end of the castle to the other. I don't know that you had to use it or not. Yeah. Why why wasn't there just something like that? Make those rails go all the way. Yeah. Or even uh, even make the the merchant. Um a fast travel location so yeah. you can just jump between merchant locations oh, i mean that's... that would be perfect when you discover one boom it's a fast travel location yeah. now that map is big yeah to go is. all the way back is asking a lot of me yeah really there was some backtracking that you couldn't get around it yeah. was necessary but i feel like the only incentive for you to backtrack and revisit areas beyond that is to do a couple of these little small side quests yes. that, and the payoff for those wasn't enough to make me want to go back yes. and backtrack through all that like the the dog one or i guess it was was it a wild dog or a wolf yeah the, the wolf I was, or whatever the yeah white, i was curious about it but it's like well dang i don't want to go all the way back yeah to go go see what that's about my second playthrough i did um so that's why this is a very replayable game sure. for anything that you may have missed mm-hmm. But um, what else do you have? You know, I felt like Leon was too slow. I mean, I realize a lot of this is nitpicky, but it's because it's their second try at this game. You know, yeah. they had a chance to fix this, fix this stuff. And I really felt like he was too slow. And I didn't like, even when, you know, click to sprint or whatever, he's not moving very fast. And I yeah. feel like a dude like Leon could probably move if he needed to. He's right? confident, Wayne. Yeah, he's exactly. confident. He doesn't need to, <laughs> he just, he doesn't need to run. He's just strutting, right? Yeah. yeah, he's strutting. I mean, all right. Power strut. I guess if he moves faster, it might blow his hair around too much or something. Exactly. So yeah, his movement speed being a little too slow for me and the fact that, and I mentioned this in the last episode on Pet Peeves, not being able to jump or dodge mm-hmm. unless you get a button prompt mm-hmm. that's irritating yeah because again just like the hit boxes on the executions you know when they're on the ground not being exactly there y- you can't dodge or parry unless it tells you you can yeah you know you should just be able to do those things anytime you want and for me it would have made the combat a lot more satisfying yeah i agree loosen it up yeah Come exactly. free boss <laughs> <laughs> Leon's a big boy. He can handle being able to dodge or, or roll on the ground or whatever. Yeah, but once again, his hair. He's got to stay looking good for Ada, though, you know? That's true. That's true. The thirst trap. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, I really think that about sums it up. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was an improvement on the first one, and the first one was good. So, I mean, I'm, the only complaints I have are just little nitpicky things. Okay, well, what would you rate it as someone who did play the original? You know, given what I said about I feel like they had the chance, they had the opportunity to make make a difference here, you know, with this game. And I don't feel like they pulled it off completely. So I think I would give it an eight. Okay. Well, I mean, that's still... Yeah. That's still pretty It's respectable. Good. Yeah. But, you know, what I would really like to see out of Resident Evil is more original stuff, you know? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. Resident Evil 4 is... The original is well-loved. I mean, it. most people consider it the best, if not one of the best, mm-hmm. in the whole Resident Evil catalog. So rather than go back and, and rehash this stuff, just you create new new games, you yeah. know? I mean, I realized that 8 came out not that long ago, but I mean, you, you know that they were working on this for years. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I just feel like those years could have been better spent yeah. with new titles. I, I see I see what you're saying and on the other end there's so many new gamers out there that you know those consoles are old now that they came out on yeah so for any new gamers out there it was a great experience I'm one of them I'm one of them but uh well I had a console and everything but I missed it the first go around yeah so I enjoyed it the second okay well welcome in welcome into the Resident Evil 4 family yes thank you 
what do you rate it? I was solidly entertained. Um, some stuff bothered me, but given everything we've talked about and just how much entertainment I got out of it, I'm thinking I would give it a nine. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah, there, there were, we talked about it. I mean, there were issues, the button prompts, the backtracking, but I can't argue with the fact that it kept me solidly entertained. Sure. Which can be hard to do. Yeah. It can be. (laughs) But yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's not bad numbers for Resident Evil 4. No, it's a solid win for Resident Evil 4, I think. Yeah. Okay, well, before we move on to our game news segment, whether it's streaming, playing competitively online, downloading content, or using remote play, Conway Corp's got you. We offer speeds up to two gigs to keep you connected and in the game. All right, Wayne, what do you have for game news? All right, my first story is actually related to Resident Evil 4, which we were just talking about. And this is uh, a story about um, the voice actress for Ada, Everybody's mm. favorite Resident Evil thirst trap. Mm-hmm. Uh, her name was Lily Gal. And apparently there has been some controversy uh, about her role in Resident Evil. The deal was we get you out of here when you deliver the amber. Would it make me use this? Would you? I guess I changed too. <laughs> you. Leon S. Kennedy. I'm not really sure I understand this because you mentioned um, having an issue with the quality of her, uh, of not of her work, but of the audio, the audio. Like you, you said, you thought it sounded like it was recorded differently or something. Yeah. Well, whenever she first popped up, I was, I was kind of like, her voice sounds a little bit different, like the quality of it. Um, I thought. I thought, but then I saw online that somebody else was saying it. I didn't click on the full article, but I saw people's comments and they were going back and forth about the quality. And then come to find out, you told me that people were having uh, an issue with the voice acting. Yeah, they, for some reason, people didn't like the performance, which is pretty bold considering that she's actually the first person of Asian descent to voice Ada. So yeah. I thought that was that was a pretty a pretty bold criticism being being she was the first one to like I guess you could say authentically yeah voice Ada portray Ada yeah I honestly had no problem with the voice acting I felt like you know you hear someone's voice and see the character and then yeah. after you hear it you roll with it and that you associate the two yeah I mean Ada is kind of a cold fish honestly you know like I mean there wasn't a lot of um, range or emotion to her performance, but I think that that's just her. down to the fact that that's Ada. You yeah, know? like she, she if she does have feelings about what's going on, mm-hmm. she keeps them close. You know, uh, she's a pro, and you don't see that on the outside. You know, yeah, like, she keeps it really cool. Right, she obviously has some kind of fondness for for Leon. Oh yeah, she pops up here and there to help him, but never too much. You know, you she can't just, help like, him too him, much if you're him. interested. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, anyway, I really I, I really thought that Lily Gow did a good job with Ada, so I'm not really sure what the controversy is about. Yeah, let us know y'all's opinions on it, because I'm, I'm a bit... Cause I would like to hear the argument. Yeah, for sure. On the other side of it, personally. Yeah. Next up, this is something that I think is really cool. Um, this comes from IGN. Um, Elden Ring creator Hidetaka Miyazaki was named amongst Time's 100 Most Influential People of 2023. Wow. This is only the second time that a video game developer has been named as one of Time's Most Influential People. So this is sort of a big win, I feel like, for the... Gaming community. Yeah, and for the argument of video games being accepted as art. You know, that's been one of those arguments for a long time now. You know, film is considered an artistic expression you know um, writing is considered artistic expression and for a long time video games have I think been striving to be taken seriously absolutely in that realm and you know and I think that just like film and just like 
literature, each person gets to take something of their own yeah. from that experience. You know? Yeah. And so I think this is sort of a little bit of a legitimization, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, for the argument. For sure. Um, I challenge anybody who doesn't think that video games or artwork to play Ghost of Tsushima because I stand by that. That For is sure. absolutely a stunning Yeah, I've, game. I've played a few that I would definitely put in that category mm -hmm. as well. All right, next up, we have um, a little bit of an update on Starfield. Now, I know that you're excited about Starfield, and as a Bethesda fan, I, I am as well. I haven't been keeping up with the hype as much as you have, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but this actually is a little bit surprising. Um, Starfield, according to Games Radar, Starfield loses Russian language support on PC, and the fans have kind of mixed feelings about that. And I'm not sure how I feel about it either. You know, of course, everyone's speculating that it has something to do with Bethesda sort of making their stance on the Russia-Ukraine war, yes. you know, making it obvious so mm -hmm. that there's no not confusion. any right no confusion about where they stand honestly i think it's a little bit of a virtue signal because it's not ultimately going to do anything but punish the russian people yeah. and the russian people who would buy the game are not the ones yeah you know that, that you're you in a battle need, with right that you need to make a a point with yeah no i feel the same i was like so y'all are potentially because we don't know for sure but allegedly yeah i love that word allegedly it makes you feel smart yeah it does um but yeah you're allegedly does that even fit here yeah okay allegedly you're gonna punish yeah the the russian gaming community which that's not who you're yeah you problem yeah with. like that's not where the beef is no so sad to see that but also we have many reasons to be nervous about starfield i feel like at this point i mean is it when is it gonna come out i mean i had the original dates so it's been pushed out it might have been twice can you can you check and see how many sure. times yeah so starfield was originally supposed to launch at the end of 2022 and so we're looking at over a year delay now see that right there it makes troubling. me yeah it makes me nervous you thought that you that's a big stretch of time that you thought you were gonna be done yeah i mean fallout 76 was delayed also wasn't it before it came out and <laughs> we know how that turned out so. i know and they cannot afford another right, bust I know. like that so uh, fingers are crossed for Starfield because I am really looking forward to that game, but I am nervous. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. The last story I have for today actually hits a little closer to home, and this is kind of hilarious. Um, KNWA, uh, Fox 24, a Fox affiliate out of Northwest Arkansas. If you guys are watching this and you're outside of Arkansas, we are actually based in Conway, Arkansas, and so this is at least uh, a story from an affiliate within our state here but um, KNWA actually ran a story that says that Arkansas gamers are ranked the second most destructive in the United States so um, yeah actually number one was Oregon uh, number two Arkansas and number three South Carolina so you know if you throw a controller through your tv or yeah they must be listening <laughs> they must be listening on multiplayer chat <laughs> absolutely listen for the breaking glass mm -hmm. this is just sort of a funny i mean like the fact that this is even ranked is hilarious to me but yeah i think they what they were uh, working off here according to uh statista is that on average a person will spend around 477 dollars in their homes after accidental damage from games according to this research oh the most common damage controllers to laptops uh -huh. and phones with accidental holes in walls ceilings and floorboards right behind not a controller no apparently no. not but you gotta think like it would be hard to 
throw a controller hard enough to damage the controller, you're probably going to damage whatever it hits, you know? Oh. If you throw the controller at your TV, it's going to break your TV, and you can probably still use the controller. I'm thinking about the ground, is what oh, I'm thinking yeah. about. So have you ever broken anything? That's a good games? question. <laughs> no, I actually have not. Uh, have I wanted to? Oh, for sure. I've gripped it really, really hard where it starts creaking. Yeah. And then I'm like. <sighs> yeah. I've thrown a controller like into the, from the couch into the love seat or yes. something, you know, like yeah. something where I knew I yeah. could get out my frustration without actually breaking any of my own stuff. Because once you get to be an adult, I feel like that number goes way down Yeah. because you're not as willing you're, you're to, punishing yourself to more. break your own property as maybe if it was bought for you. All right, that's all I've got for news. But before we go on and close the show out, I got to let you know about Conway Corp Internet. Whether it's streaming, playing competitively online, downloading content, or using remote play, Conway Corp's got you. We offer speeds of up to two gig to keep you connected and in the game. Okay, well, that's all we have for you guys today. Feel free to drop a like or a comment, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Gamer Gab.